In this video, I'm going to show how to fetch the list of items from a Cloudfire store database and then display them on a Flutter app. So I'm going to use the example of a shopping list app where we have the database on Cloudfire store and we have a collection inside the collection. We have some documents and we are going to fetch those documents and display them on a list in our app. So uh, inside the project currently, inside the lead directory, I have a file named item list. Inside, I'm going to create a new state full widget and inside the main.dart file to the property home of the material app widget, we are going to pass an instance of this newly created widget so that this gets loaded whenever we open the app. Now, if we run the app, then we can see this widget being loaded as the home page so currently we have nothing in the widget tree only a container so we can see a blank page here and now this one is the database of the app so this is an example of a shopping list app and we have the database on cloud fire store in cloud fire store we store the data inside a collection so here we can see the collection named shopping list a collection contain multiple documents here we can see the list of documents in that exists inside our collection and these individual documents represent the individual items of our shopping list now i'm going to show you how to fetch this data this list of items and then display them on a list on our app on this page so the first tip to interact with a cloud firestore database is to add the package cloud firestore so we can execute this command flutter pub add then the name of the package cloud firestore on the terminal and it will install the package inside our project and then we have to import the library cloud firestore inside the file where we want to access the apis of this package so inside item underscore list dot dart file i'm going to add this import statement as we are planning to interact with the cloud firestore apis inside this page inside this file now let us also add a scaffold to the widget tree so let's return an instance of the scaffold widget from this build function and let us also add an instance of the widget app bar to the property app bar of scaffold to the body for now let's add a simple container so this will make the page look like a proper material design page Now to get the content of our collection of the Firestore database, we have to get a reference of our collection. So we have to get an instance of the class collection reference and we can get that by calling the function collection on an instance of the class Firebase Firestore. And we have to pass the name of the collection. So this is shopping list in this case. This class collection reference has a function named gate which returns a future of type query snapshot. So we can use that future to get an instance of the class query snapshot and then from that query snapshot we can get the individual documents of our collection. So let us add the init state callback function here and then let us call the function gate on this reference of the collection let us create a future of type query snapshot and hold the result of this function the value returned by this function inside that variable now we have to get the instance of the class query snapshot that we get by calling the function gate on the collection reference from this future so for that we can use the callback function then so we have to pass an implementation of a function to this function then and this function will get executed whenever the data arrives and we have to add one parameter which will be the actual data so in this case an instance of the class query snapshot now we have the instance of the class query snapshot and we can get the list of documents of our collection and their content from this instance itself so for that let us create a function let's name it parse data let's add a parameter of type query snapshot we shall pass this value this argument value that we have here to the function parse data and then we shall return a map 
a list of maps so the individual maps of this list will contain the name and quantity of the individual items let us also create a variable of type list of map to hold this list of items and here inside this function we are going to call parse data and then we shall assign the result the list that we get from this function to this variable shopping items to this list of maps now inside this function parse data let us try to get the data from this instance of query snapshot so this class query snapshot has a getter called docs which gives us a list of query document snapshots so the individual instances of the class query document snapshot represents the individual documents of our collection and we can get the content of those individual documents from this instances of query document snapshot so now we are going to convert this list of query document snapshots to a list of maps so for that we are going to call the function map on this list list docs and to the function map we have to pass an implementation of a function where we do the conversion so this function that we pass to map gets one argument the that will be the individual items of this list and then we can create some other type using the content of this argument and then we shall call the function to list to make a list out of it now inside this function that we pass to map we are going to create a, a map itself so we are going to return a map inside that map we are going to add two key value pairs corresponding to the two fields that we have inside our documents of the database so one let's name it item name which will hold the name of the shopping item so we can get the name from this argument that we get so this is an instance of query document snapshot and we can get the values of these fields using this syntax of similar to a map similarly let us add another key value pair for the value for the item quantity and then finally we are going to return this list of maps from this function now as we have got the list of items let us display these items on our app so we are going to use a list view here but let me tell you there is a better way of getting the data and then displaying them on the ui and i am going to show you that but for now let us add a list view to the property body of this scaffold we are going to use the constructor builder because that is the best option for displaying a long list of items long and dynamic list of items so to the constructor builder we have to pass an implementation of a function to the parameter item builder this function gets two argument first is context and then the second is index we can use this index to get the individual items of the list that we are trying to display from this function item builder we have to return the widget representing the layout of the individual items right so here let us return an instance of the widget list style because this is a very helpful widget for displaying the for creating layouts of the individual items of a list so we are going to pass values for the properties title and subtitle of the list style but before that let us try to get the item of the list at this particular index so this is a list of map so we are going to create a map to hold the item at this particular index so let's name it this item and we are going to get it from the shopping item list by the index and now to the property title we have to pass the text of the title and then the then for the subtitle we have to pass the quantity and we also have to pass the number of items in our list to the parameter item count of this constructor builder 
Now let us display a text that no item is found if the item list is empty, if the list shopping items is empty. And for clarity, let us create a separate function for creating this list view. So we can do that easily by right clicking and then going to refactor and then we have to select this option extract method. And this will create a separate method and from that function, that method, this widget tree will be returned. Now here you can see that a function named build list view has been created and the widget tree, the basically the list view is being returned from this function. Now we are going to pass the list to this function and instead of using this list directly, we are going to use it through the parameter. Now here while adding the widget to the body, first we are going to check if shopping items is empty. If it is empty, then we are going to add an instance of it, the text widget with the text no items found. And if it is not empty, then we are going to call this function build list view and we shall pass the list shopping items. And we are not done yet. We have to call set state after we get the data because we have to rebuild the UI, right? So whenever we get the data, we have to call set state to inform the fr framework about the changes and then it will call the build function again. So the UI will be rebuilt and this time while creating the layout, while building the widget tree, we have some data in the shopping items. So here let's call the function set state and to this function we have to pass an implementation of a function. Inside this function we are going to add this statement. Now save the changes. Run the app and this time we should see the list of items. But we have got an error. And here I can notice the mistakes. To the property title and subtitle of list style we have to pass instances of the text widget with the text to be displayed but we were passing the text itself now save the changes and here we can see the list of shopping items now let me show you the better way of doing this we are going to use the widget called future builder so to the property body of the scaffold let us add an instance of the widget called future builder so this widget helps us display data on the UI from a future. So we don't need to make a call to the function then and provide the callback function so that that gets executed whenever the data arrives. Instead we can do all of these things inside this widget future builder itself. We have to provide an implementation of a function to the parameter builder of this constructor and this function gets an instance of the build context and an instance of a class called async snapshot as an argument and the data that we are looking for the data that arrives at the future becomes available inside this instance of async snapshot so we no longer need this call to the function then and we are going to pass the future to the parameter future of this constructor future builder we also have to specify the type that we are waiting for so this future future data is going to provide us an instance of query snapshot so we have to specify the type here and this instance snapshot will provide us the instance that we are looking for so uh, once the data arrives the instance of query snapshot arrives we shall get that inside a property called data of this instance snapshot so here first we are going to check whether we have got any error so we can verify that by checking whether the boolean has error is true or not so if snapshot dot has error is true then we have some error we are going to display the error on this page so we shall return an instance of text widget with the error message and we shall place that at the center if we have some data if snapshot dot has data is true then we are going to display the list of items so we are going to call the function parse data 
and to the function parse data we have to pass an instance of query snapshot right we can get that from this instance snapshot so we can pass snapshot dot data to it so snapshot dot data will provide us an instance of query snapshot in this case let us consider a different scenario where the future will be providing us an instance of a string then this snapshot dot data will provide us that string now let us return the list view from this block so we are going to call the function build list view and we shall pass the list of items and if has error is false which means that no error has occurred and has data 2 is false which means that the data has not yet arrived then we are going to display a loader and for that we are going to return an instance of the widget circular progress indicator wrapped by the widget center we don't even need this list of map named shopping items anymore we can also change this widget to a state list widget because we are not using the we are not making changes manually by calling the set state etc so these changes are being handled by the future builder itself now if you run the app you will notice the loader first and then you will see the items now there is another way another approach using which we can fetch the data from a firestore database and i'm going to show you that but before that let me show you the problem that the other approach solves so the problem that we have now which can be solved using that approach so let us take a look at the database let us try to add one document using this interface itself in a real app we are we will not be doing this easily because we'll have the option to add items through the app itself but here for demonstration purpose let's add an item using this interface and let us save this and now you notice that the changes does not get reflected on the ui immediately we have to refresh the app we have to refresh this list and as we don't have any refresh mechanism we have to close this the app and load it again and then only we can see the newly added item on our list but often we need to listen to the real-time changes of the database so whenever something some new item gets added to the database we have to update the ui and display the newly added item immediately if something is changed some information is updated we have to update the ui immediately so in such a case we have to listen to the real-time changes of the database and we can do that with help of a stream so there is a function in the collection reference class named snapshots which gives us a stream and we can use this stream and use this stream builder to listen to the real-time changes and update the ui accordingly in such a case when we need to display real-time changes we can use a stream builder instead of a future builder so there is a function named snapshot of the class collection reference we can call that instead of calling gate and as gate returns a future in a similar way snapshot returns an instance of a stream and we can listen to the real-time changes through a stream so to display the items using a stream we can use the widget stream builder instead of a future builder this widget stream builder does not have this property named future it has a property named stream to this property we have to pass the stream to which we want to listen to and the rest of the syntax is almost similar now save the changes load the app and let us try to add a new document to the database and this this time you'll notice that the newly added item gets reflected on the ui immediately now if this has been helpful then subscribe to the channel because i'm going to create more of such videos